So I'm going to talk to you today about relaxation and responsiveness because quite often, you know, we have horses that aren't relaxed and so they're very reactive. We think they're responsive, but actually they're overreactive. And then when we get a horse that is relaxed, we often lose responsiveness. And so having relaxation and responsiveness is the key. So I'm here with my horse Jazz and he used to have a lot of trouble with relaxation and still does in some situations, but not as bad as it used to be. But you can see, you know, like he's pretty relaxed. So how can we tell when a horse is relaxed? Well, his head is below the withers. They want to eat grass. They can stand still. They're not trying to go anywhere, whether it's to go back to the barn or where they feel safe. They feel safe with you. So those are the kinds of things you're looking for in relaxation. And now I'm going to just walk him and I'll just stay fairly close to the camera. But I'm going to say, all right, is he relaxed in motion? Because some horses can relax when you're just standing there and they're eating grass, but as soon as you start moving, the head comes up and you have all kinds of problems. So here, how do I know he's relaxed? Well, he's kind of ambling along, his head is below his withers or at least level with his withers, and that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. If I trotted him, I'd want the same thing. So if I can trot him, and his head is kind of low, you know, I'm not asking him to stretch way down, and he, you can hear him blow out there maybe, he went So those are also signs of relaxation, and the fact that my horse could slow down, relax, eat grass, again, that's relaxation. Now, there's lots of little pieces to this as well, but let's talk in gross motor skills. If your horse cannot stand still, you can't trust it on a loose rein, can't just eat grass and stay in the one place without eating and taking you, you know, a mile over there, then your horse is not relaxed. If his head's up, if his ears are sharp, if his breathing is, is tight and shallow or rapid, then you can bet that your horse is not relaxed. So relaxation is really important. And there are very specific ways to get a horse to relax. One of the best ones is to do a lot of nothing. Because it seems like, you know, when our horses um, get frantic, we get more frantic and we do more instead of doing less. So a lot of the time just staying on the ground is a good idea and allowing your horse to relax. Do lots of what we call parking spot. Like I've got my horse in a, an imaginary parking spot here and I expect my horse to stand still. A lot of people go, oh, my horse would never stand still like that. This horse never stood still like this. And, and other horses that I have, they, that's not natural to them. We have to teach them how to do this. And the parking spot exercise is a great one. Every time he steps out of the box, I'll put him back. But I'm not going to hold him here. I'm not going to prevent anything. I'm going to trust him. And if he doesn't uh, do what I want, then I'll teach him by putting him back in that position. Another thing that really helps horses to relax is to bend their neck. And so if you just softly bend their neck, um, you know, it's not like pull them around in a, a hard lateral flexion or anything like that. But a lot of horses, when they're tense, they're very braced in the neck as well as braced in the body. And if you can just ride along and tip their nose like that when you're riding, that actually will start to relax them. Let me show you. So I'm just going to walk in a little circle here. And you can bend the neck to the inside or the outside, but you just need to balance it with the other rein. And I'm just going to hold him in that little lateral bend with my legs doing nothing, right? When a horse is not relaxed, the more you do with your legs and your hands, the worse they get. So I'm just going to keep him in this little bend in his neck. Or like I said, I could even do it to the outside. But if you have a lot of trouble steering, then you might want to do it to the inside. And balance his uh, feeling between both reins. So you're not just pulling on the one rein and letting this rein go, because look what will happen, right? Same thing when I've got him flexed to the inside. If I let this outside rein go, then he's going to go over there instead of stay on track. So when you're bending the neck, you just hold it nice and steady until, like there, he's starting to want to push down with his neck. And I then can release the reins and you see his neck goes down. So just hold that gently, like you don't want to force them into it, gently in that position until you feel the horse wanting to push down on the bit and then you can give longer reins and say, yep, that's exactly what we want you to do. So again, we're looking for that softness, 
instead of being braced and up here, that they're relaxing downwards into the bit or whatever it is you're riding them in and not up and worried about everything else. So that little relax rein position will really help you and your horse to get more relaxed and pretty soon it will take very little. But in the beginning, you might have to stay on this circle for five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes until your horse finally goes, ah, oh, I can relax. But the more you keep changing things, the more you fuss with your legs and the reins, the worse your horse is gonna get. So parking spot and relax rein are two techniques that are gonna help you a lot. And then stay in the walk. If your horse is not relaxed in the walk, don't go to the trot, let alone the canter. And just stay in a small circle that you, so you don't have to hold your horse back. So relaxation is an art and it's really important because the more tense your horse is, the less he can learn. And also the performance will go downhill. So relaxation is something we really need to get good at with our horses. So now let's talk about responsiveness because a lot of horses, once they're relaxed, they become dull. And that's why a lot of people don't really work on relaxation because they worry that their horse is now not going to be responsive. Well, don't confuse reactive with responsive. So reactive is kind of quick and tight movements and they're almost like taking over from you. It's a little bit too sharp, a little too quick. And it's not a lovely velvety feeling. You know, it's kind of a hard feeling. So when you have responsiveness, there's a harmony to it and a softness and the horse is using his brain as well as his body. So again, when they're not relaxed, they're using their emotions. So we want the horse thinking. See, Jazz is curious, he's looking around, but he's, if he was worried about something, his head would be up here and, and looking. So that would not be a time to say, okay, let's go and do something. I would work on relaxation in that situation. But now he is relaxed. Let me see if I can have him responsive. And there's four ways that I want him to be responsive. Forwards, backwards, and side to side. And I'm not just talking about sideways movement. I'm talking about being able to move the front end and the hindquarters. So I really like to isolate my aids instead of doing everything to the horse at once because it makes it much easier for them to understand. So I'm just going to do this. Let me see if he's responsive to the bit. I'm not going to do anything else with my body, but I'm seeing if he's responsive, which he is. That was nice and light. His mouth was closed. He went backwards fluidly. His uh, head didn't fly up. He didn't get tight. He wasn't worried. And now, can I just use my seat and ask him to go forward? All right, just my seat, not my legs. And now, can I pick up my reins and ask him to go backwards? And notice I'm holding my reins up because I'm just isolating them. And now what about side to side? Can I move the front end? Can I move the back end? So it really doesn't matter which side you start, which end you start with, but um, usually more confident and dominant horses, the sticky end will be the front. And with horses that are more um, naturally tense and afraid, the sticky end will be the back. So on this horse, it used to be the back but now he's pretty balanced. So let's see. So again, I'm gonna isolate these aids. I'm only going to use my reins. I'm gonna take my hand kind of to uh, eight o'clock that way and see if he responds off of that. That was quite nice. And then I wanna be able to do it also in the other direction. Not sideways just take the front end and I'm going to take my hand towards four o'clock and he's not really yielding off of it well so I'm just going to tap him with my stick until he does that was good and now I'm going to do the same with the hind end I'm going to keep the front end quiet just with one hand like this and then I'm going to press him with one leg say don't walk forward and how soft is that it's reasonably soft He's swishing his tail a little bit, so he's kind of going, well, didn't really feel like yielding. So I'm going to now do the other leg. And again, I'm not bending his neck. I'm just isolating this. So he went forward. So one leg should not mean forward. And I touched him with my stick then. And I didn't, like, punish him. I just went, you need to listen to my leg. If my leg is pushing, see, this one's doing nothing. But this one has a light push on it. 
then he should move away from that. So now I've got the front end working, I've got the back end working, this is responsive, I've got the backup working, and I've got the forwards working. And now I can do that with all kinds of different gates. And when my horse is responsive and he's with me in just a slow situation like that, then I'm going to try it at the trot and the walk and then at the canter and the trot. But you want to maintain that relaxation and responsiveness through everything. So it's just a short, sweet uh, session for you to be able to absorb those things um, and know that you have to balance them, balance the relaxation with the responsiveness and vice versa. And know when you're losing it. If you lose relaxation, you need to put it back. If you lose responsiveness, you need to put it back. And that's how you're gonna keep you and your horse happy and achieve more harmony so you can go and have fun and achieve success in whatever it is you wanna do with your horse. I want to welcome you to Happy Horse, Happy Life. Come join us.